Hello, ladies and gentlemen, is your host with the most, Avery LR32 here, and destroy the ever-living boo-boo stain off of that like and subscribe button as we click off all these BS ads on YGO Organization. They're never going to fix their crap at this point. But ladies and gentlemen, I apologize about not uploading for the past few days. I just started this brand new part-time job, and it's been stressing me out, and it's just been so insane. I'm just kidding. We're we're doing pretty good, but we have definitely been busy and been having some uh, family issues and stuff like that. But you know what? We are doing okay, and we are hanging in there, and I hope you are hanging in there and having a fantastic day or night whenever you're watching this video. Hopefully, we'll be getting a new ban list soon because this format is still dead AF, but we got some more Phantom Nightmare reveals. Uh, as always, I apologize for all the BS dog water ads on YG Organization. They're never going to fix their shit at this point. They probably don't even know who I am, but every video I'm going to say, fix your shit, YG Organization, although I should just use Adblock. Anyway, uh, I want to talk about Phantom Nightmare, some new support that came out um, with Magic Spectre, and then like a new Silent Force archetype. Um, so a quick backstory on Magic Spectre. This deck used to be really cool back in i want to say around like 2014 cosmo like like when cosmo was the best deck of the format you know everybody in the mom was playing reasoning and cosmo with maxis and, and all that stuff and magic specter was really cool at the time because like all of the monsters were all the main deck monsters were pendulum and then they also all had the same static effect of that they couldn't be targeted or destroyed by card effects which was bananas because they were kind of weak monsters stat line wise but yet they couldn't be targeted or destroyed by card effects. So, like, you couldn't just use board wipes to clear their board. If they pendulum summoned, then you could use something like Time Space Trap Hole that was played back in the day in order to clear their board. Funny story, uh, I actually, when Magic Spectre was a good deck back in the day, <laughs> someone tried to pendulum summon for five, and I hit them with a Time Space Trap Hole. I paid 5,000 life points, and they scooped. It was hilarious. So, th there's your rundown of Magic Spectre. Also, they have, like, I think two trap cards. One that like pops a card, another another ones I think I think is like an Infernity Barrier Omni Negate. So do keep that in mind as uh, we talk about these cards. I don't remember what Magic Spectre do outside of that. It's been years. I think it's like literally been a decade. So do keep that in mind as we go through this. If I if I sound like I'm just sort of BSing, I'm sorry. I mean I haven't seen this deck actually do anything competitively in like ten years. But seeing new support is good regardless because if it is good enough, then it's it's gonna get them there. So this is a Magic Spectre Porcupine Yamarashi. This is a Wind Spellcaster Pendulum Effect Monster. Pendulum Scale 2, Level 4, 1500 Attack and Defense. You can only use the first and second effect of this card's name each once per turn. During the main phase, if you control a Magic Spectre Monster or Quick Effect, you can Special Summon this card from your hand. That seems pretty hot, having a free extender like that. If this card's normal or Special Summon, you can target a Magic Spectre Spell in your grave and set it. And then, of course, it can be shown by your opponent's card effects, and your opponent cannot target this card card effects. That's pretty standard for Magic Spectres. I can't think off the top of my head what spells they have that are good. I think they're getting a new spell in this stuff here. Uh, this is Magic Spectre Draco. Wind Spellcaster exceeds Pendulum Effect. Pendulum Scale 5. Rank 4, 2300 attack, 2000 offense. Its pendulum effect uh, can only be used once per turn. If you have a Magic Spectre or Draco Slayer card in your other pendulum zone, you can add one Magic Spectre card from your deck to your hand. Then you can destroy one card in your pendulum zone. I don't really know if they're going to be playing Draco Slayers or Magic Spectre stuff. And then it's just a generic two level four monsters. If you can pendulum summon level four, you can pendulum summon this card from your extra deck. You can only use the first monster effect of this card's name up to twice per turn. If a monster monster is distributed while this monster is on the field, you can detach a material from this card. Spread some one level six or lower wind spellcaster monster from your deck. That harkens back to Magic Spectre Unicorn Curin, because if I remember correctly, that's a level six wind spellcaster. I can't think of any other spellcasters off the top of my head that hit that stat line. If this card in the monster zone is destroyed by bow by card effect, by battle or card effect or tributed, you can place it in your pendulum zone. So this is where like everyone's kind of just shitting their pants all over the floor because the level six or lower wind spellcaster from the deck makes people think that Kieran is going to come back. I mean, can Kieran really come back? Let me know in the comments. Like, I don't really know if Kieran is a card that could come back. Because like back in the day, what made Kieran so busted was that it was a fucking compulse that couldn't be targeted or destroyed by card effects. Back that up with like a Miss Valley Apex Avion and like you're just not playing the ball game. Uh, this here is Magic Spectre Orthros Nue. I feel like I'm reading a Jujutsu Kaisen card or something. Like if the Jujutsu Kaisen were to be a card game with freaking Nue. 
Wind Spellcaster Link Effect Monster, 1500 sack Link 2, bottom left, bottom right. Two Pendulum Monsters, including a Magic Spectre Monster. You can only use the effect of this card in once per turn. If this card is Link Summon, you can activate this effect. You cannot Special Summon Monsters from the extra deck for the rest of the turn, except Magic Spectre and Draco Slayer Monsters. Also, add up to two face up Magic Spectre Pendulum Monsters from your extra deck to your hand. Then you can add up to two Magic Spectre Pendulum Monsters with different names from each other from your deck to your extra deck face up. Uh, just at a glance, this Link Monster seems fucking bananas. Like, you can pick up just two Magic Spectre Pendulum Monsters from the extra deck to your hand and then replace those with two from the deck with different names from each other into the extra deck. And, like, if you set up your scales, like, that's like a Pendulum... Actually, that's a Pendulum 4. Because you summon the two that are in your hand that you just added or you use them to set up the scales. Then you summon the two from the extra deck to where this guy points to. Yeah, this thing's bananas. I may not know what Magic Spectres do off the top of my head, but they're bananas. Um, this is Magic Spectre Wins. They have another quick play. You can only activate one card with this card's name per turn. When you activate this card, you can also attribute one Wind Spellcaster Monster. Special summon one Magic Spectre Monster from your hand or grave. Or if you attributed a monster at activation, you can special summon it from your deck instead. I'm pretty sure that they have other quick play spells in the archetype. This stuff seems bonkers. I don't know if Kieran is going to come back. If Kieran comes back, then, um, yeah, th this this deck just might take a dump all over the floor in, uh, in the next format. Because keep in mind, we're probably not getting Phantom Nightmare like pff, probably like january if i'm being honest so do keep that in mind next up is the novox prayer the archetype as the ads just vomit all over my screen um so this here let's let's just dive on into it this is interesting so this is novox the silent forcer disciple so quick backstory on this um there was years ago a novox prayer and a novox monster ritual monster that like didn't really do anything like they were just garbage so this is playing off of like old ritual monsters from back in that time like skull guardian that didn't have an effect Sarabas the ancient ascended like has support in this like it's really interesting so this is a level one light fairy effect monster 50 attack 2050 defense because why not uh drytron players let me know if this stuff it like helps you at all you can only use the first and third effect of this card's name each once per turn. If this card's normal or special summon, you can place one Silent Force Continuous Spell or Trap from your deck face up in your Spell and Trap Zone. If you would Ritual Summon exactly one Light Warrior or Dragon Ritual Monster with a card effect that requires use of monsters, you can use this card as the entire requirement. So this thing's basically like a uh, Necroz whatever monster that could be used as the entire requirement. I can't remember its name off the top of my head. If a Light Warrior and or Dragon Ritual Monster monster is special summoned to your field, while this card's in your grave, you can special summon this card. So this is something that um, I want to point out as we go through these ritual monsters. A lot of these cards say if a light warrior and or dragon ritual monster, blah, blah, blah. Keep in mind that that is when it says that it's saying a light warrior and or light dragon ritual monster. It's not any dragon ritual monster. It's like you can't do shenanigans with like chaos max dragon unless that's like a light attribute. So do keep that in mind when you're looking at these cards that unless they change the ruling, as far as I know, the ruling would be that it's a light warrior and or a light dragon ritual monster. Uh, next up, we have uh, Saphira, the Wise Silent Force Queen. This is playing off the Saphira Ritual Monster. Uh, level 6 Light Dragon Effect Monster, 2500 Attack, 2400 Defense. You can only use the first and second effect of this card's name each once per turn. You can discard this card, uh, send one Ritual Spell from your deck to the grave. Then you can add one Light Warrior or Dragon Ritual Monster from your deck or grave to your hand. See what I mean? It's a Light Warrior or Light Dragon Ritual Monster from deck or grave to hand. You can banish this card from your graveyard. Ritual Summon one Light Warrior or Dragon Ritual Monster from your hand by attributing monsters from your field or hand whose total level is equal to see the level of the ritual monster you ritual summon the reason why that they're so particular on this is because these attributes cover like the cards that they're retraining so like Saphira is like our light ritual skull guardian is a light warrior you know stuff like that next up we have Saravis the sagely silent force dragon so a retrain of Saravis level 7 light dragon effect monster 2600 attack 2800 defense <clears throat> you can only uh, special summon with the first effect of this card's name once per turn. You can only use the second effect of this card's name once per turn. You can special summon this card from your hand by shuffling two spells from your hand in her graveyard into the deck, including at least one ritual spell. Uh, Drytron players, where are you at? <laughs> when your opponent activates a card or effect, quick effect, you can return this card to the hand. Special summon one light warrior dragon ritual monster from your hand or deck, but shuffle it into the deck during the end phase of the next turn. I mean, it seems okay. I don't really get the whole point of being so confined to these old ass ritual monsters that don't really do anything outside of like Sarabas, because i think Sarabas can negate a targeting effect by sending from field or hand to grave skull guardian the silent forcing protector this is a retrain of skull guardian 
Level 7 Light Warrior Ritual Fat Monster, 2050 attack, 2500 defense. You can ritual summon this card with Silent Forcing Prayer. You can only use the first and third effect of this card's name each once per turn. If this card's ritual summon, you can add one Silent Force monster or one Warrior or Dragon Ritual monster from your deck to your hand. Gains 2050 attack while Novox, the Silent Force, or Disciples on your field or in your grave. So it's basically 4050 base attack. When your opponent activates a card or effect and you control Novox, the Silent Force, or Disciple, quick effect, you can negate the activation if you do destroy that card. I mean, it's, it's cute. It seems like a lot of setup. Silent Forcing Prayer, Ritual Spell. You can only use the second effect this card's in once per turn. Ritual Summon one Light Ritual Monster from your hand by tributing Light Monsters from your hand or field whose total levels equal or exceed the level of the Ritual Monster you Ritual Summon. If a face-up Light Ritual Monster monster you control leaves the field by an opponent's card effect, you can banish this card from your graveyard, especially some one Sarab as the Ancient and Ascended, uh, Sapphira, Queen of Dragons, or Skull Guardian, the Silent Enforcing Protector from your hand or deck, ignoring its summoning conditions. Saravis, I feel like, is the most busted thing just because it's got the targeting negation. Silent Forcing Barrier, Continuous Spell. You can only use the second effect of this card's name once per turn. While you control Novox, the Silent Force of Disciple, or a Light Ritual Monster, your opponent's monsters cannot target non-ritual monsters for attacks. Also, your opponent cannot target Light Monsters you control with card effects. Again, Drytron players where you're at. I'm pretty sure y'all play some Light Attributes. During your main phase, you can add one Silent Force card or one Skull Guardian Ritual Monster from your deck to your hand except Silent Forcing Barrier. No one's playing the original Skull Guardian. I mean, it'd be cool if the original Skull Guardian got played. The artwork seems dope. I just don't think it's going to see play. Uh, Silent Forcing Authority, Continuous Trap. You can only use the first effect of this card's name once per turn. Uh, during the main phase, you activate one of these effects. Shuffle one Light Warrior or Dragon Ritual Monster or one Ritual Spell from your hand or grave in the deck. And if you do, take one Silent Force Monster from your deck and either add to your hand or special summon it. Or you can target cards your opponent controls up to the number of Light Warrior and Dragon Ritual Monsters you control. Destroy them, also destroy this card. This is like a uh, Icarus attack for rituals. So... Not really much to say about the rituals. I think that they're kind of subpar just because they're retrains of old cards, and I, I feel like it's going to be kind of clunky unless you play it as like a sub engine and maybe Drytron. I think that that Magic Specter stuff is going to definitely destroy some booty booty buttholes. <laughs> so, guys, let me know what you think down in the comments below. Again, hopefully, we'll get a balance soon and we can kind of kick things back into high gear. But thank you guys for watching, and I will see you in the next video.